What's happening? <laughs> sit, everybody sit, we have to make sure we're okay. Don't want anybody to get hurt before the Dane train's in motion. <laughs> Gonna be back, let me stretch. Uh. The other day, I don't know if you've ever gotten this, about, uh, it was about 2.30 in the afternoon. I got the itchiest asshole I've ever gotten. <laughs> on record. And I keep a record of my itchy assholes. May 14th, 1985, I had a very itchy asshole. This one, ousted it. Get out of here, old itchy asshole. Oh, it's the worst, isn't it? Oh, you just, you feel, usually you're at work or someplace that you can't focus on it, you gotta do some other activities, right? And the entire day, you just kinda bounce around and try to, try to shake it out, right? <laughs> oh, man. Wish I had some superpowers. I was thinking about that the other day. Maybe quit comedy, fight some crime. Everybody wants to fly, that's the number one power. If I could grant you a power, Dane, I'd love to fly. Yeah, who the fuck doesn't? Who doesn't want to leave the show tonight and be like, all right, I'll catch you guys later. <laughs> and zip up into the skies. I can show you the world. Shining, shimmering splendor. <laughs> Love to shoot a laser out of my cock. <laughs> and when I'm empty, my balls glow. <laughs> Love you. Bald are empty. You know what I'd like to be able to do more than anything else? I'd love to be able to shoot spaghetti out of my fingertips. Because nobody wants to be covered in spaghetti. No. If I'm on a date with a girl and she's very rude, I'll be like, you know what? Enjoy your spaghetti, you're very rude. Enjoy your spaghetti, because you're rude. <laughs> These are all dreams. These are all things that we want to have. If I could grant you a power, any power, what would you want? Anything right now? Duh, Jesus. You want to be Jesus? God, you're such an egotistical prick. Thinks he's Jesus. Ah, Jesus. I'd love to cover him with spaghetti right now. <laughs> Enjoy your spaghetti, you're very egotistical. <laughs> oh, Christ. Not you. <laughs> so I'm hanging out with all my buddies and um, I realized something. I realize something. Think of the group of people you've known the longest in your life. Think of the group of friends that you've hung out with the most. Maybe you're all here tonight. And this is what I've realized. I had an epiphany, and here it is right here. There is one person in every group of friends that nobody fucking likes. <laughs> you basically keep them there to hate their guts. When that person is not around the rest of your little base camp, your hobby is cutting that person down. Example, Karen is always a douchebag. Every group has a Karen and she's always a bag of douche. When she's not around, you just look at each other and go, God, Karen, she's such a douchebag. Until she walks up and then you're like, hey, what's up, Karen? Karen, what's up, Karen? There's always that one person, and I'm looking out and some of you guys are like, mm, I disagree. Well, you're the person. You're the person nobody likes. I 
I know, it is so true, and that's why it's funny. It is so true. That's why it's funny. Because it's so true, hence funny. <laughs> Your whole life that person's been there too, right? That's how Brian is in our group. Nobody likes Brian. Yet everywhere we go, Brian would show up, even if we didn't tell him where we were going. We would go someplace and he would do that, I just found you run, hi guys. What's up guys? And one of us would always see him and warn the rest of the group. We'd be like, fucking Brian's coming. <laughs> what? Fucking Brian is coming. That's his name, fucking Brian's coming. I heard a rumor when he was born, even the doctor said, fucking Brian's coming. Let's get this demon seed out of here. That's what I'm saying, quote unquote. And you can quote me on the quote, unquote. <laughs> We've always had creepy people around. Somewhere in your life, there's a creepy individual. And it starts off when we're youngins. When we're youngins, there's a creepy person. Back in school, back in the day, which by the way, I don't know if you know this, was a Wednesday. That's a little fun fact. Yeah, when you refer to back in the day, it was a Wednesday. Take that home, chew it. It's delicious. Back when we were little tots, there was always that one kid in school, that kid in class, smelt like piss. Right? Robbie was his name. Robbie or Obby, he was an Obby name. And Obby didn't just smell like a hint of piss. He didn't smell like a smidgen of piss. That kid smelt like he was dipped in a vat of piss. Like he woke up that morning and said, woo, bring on the piss and someone brought on the piss. I don't know who would bring piss on, but you can pretty much hire anybody on Google these days to just type in piss painters or something and I'm sure somebody come over and coat you down, put a sheen of piss on you for a reasonable price. He would steal from the class. He was a fucking thief, a fucking stealing thief. He would use his piss vapor as a way to deter you from watching him steal shit from the class, because he's a thief, a klepto thief, Bobby. <laughs> he would always take my favorite markers, those smelly markers. Remember those, the teacher would put them out, everybody would freak, give me the red one, give me the red one. <laughs> <laughs> this smells like cherries. <laughs> I guarantee you this, it's like cherries, but it's a marker. <laughs> give me the brown one, I'll trade you, give me the, <laughs> cinnamon, this one's cinnamon. The brown is cinnamon. <laughs> How do they do this? How do they do this? But the black one always smelled like an asshole, didn't it? You grab the black one. What is that? That's a bag of asses. I'm keeping this. This one's mine. I can't stop, guys. I can't. I just saw Jesus' eyes. This marker has shown me Jesus' eyes. <laughs> and even though this marker smelt like an asshole, and you just saw Jesus' eyes, there was still a kid following you around. Can I smell it? Can I smell? What is it? Can I didn't get it? Can I just smell? Can I say? And finally, he would aggravate you until you were like, here, fine, smell it. And when he leaned in, you go, ah! <laughs> nice face. I'm gonna puke blood. What are you? What are you? <laughs> your whole life, your whole life, there's always been that one creepy, weird person somewhere in your life. I guarantee it. That's just when we were little. Then you finally grow up. <laughs> That's the sound of growing up. <laughs> Even now, at your job, there is a freak. There is a weird guy at every job that makes you concernicus every time he's around. And the strange thing about it, it's the same guy at every single job you go to, right? He's there, you quit, you go to the new job, and you're like, oh my God, isn't that the guy from the other job? That's the guy, the scary guy. Why am I talking in such a high voice? It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. <sighs> I can describe the guy. I can tell you right now. I can list all the features 
of this guy. First of all, he's not a fat guy. He's not fat. You would never say he's fat, but he is shapes. He's like an amoeba. He's always a different consistency. He's like a lava lamp type of individual. He walks around very slow. He's got that perfect orb front ass right here. What is that? It's perfect. It's like he's got a botanical garden and he grows potatoes on his taint. What is that? You want to see it, but you don't. You want to see it, but you're all set. Nobody talks to that guy. You don't talk to that guy. He's got the blue blocker glasses on. You never see his eyes. He's got the pocket with a whole jubilee of pens coming up out of there in case he has to write a lot. And nobody talks to that guy. If you're in the break room with a couple of your friends, right, you see him come morphing in out of your periphery. Second he comes in, you're like, hey, do you guys want to get the fuck out of the break room? Do you guys want to... What do you guys want to do? Let's go up on the roof and break dance. Let's just, let's go behind the vending machine. Can somebody pull the vending machine up so I can go behind here? Move the machine, please. Please. Nobody talks to that guy, but let me tell you something. Any job I've ever had in my life, I talk to that guy. I would talk to him. I'd find him on purpose, and I would have little chit-chats with him, and I would be very interested. I'd be like, by the way, here's a Snickers. That's for you. Peanuts, caramel, put that in your mouth. Enjoy that. <laughs> you know why I talk to that guy? Because when that day finally comes where he <laughs> snaps and he comes into work with a sawed off shotgun, walking through the hall, <laughs> and he finally gets to my office, he's going to be like, <gasps> Thanks for the candy. <laughs> You laugh now, but you know Monday morning you're gonna be like, hey Marcus, how was your weekend? What'd you do? Here, I bought you some pens for your crazy pocket. I know you love pens, and I happen to love pens too. We should talk about pens someday. We should sit around and talk about pens. Inks, pens, caps, I love them. Let's talk a little bit about L-O-V-E. Sometimes you meet somebody and you have what is known as a relationship and things can go great. And if it goes great, then you have a great relationship. Sometimes it doesn't go so great. And I call that a relationship. <laughs> when you're not in love, when you don't have love, everybody you know falls in love. On like the same day, even Karen the douchebag falls in love. Even retarded people in your neighborhood are getting married on their front lawn as you drive by. What? The Tards just got married on their lawn. That's great. I have nobody and the Tards just committed to each other for a lifetime of tardiness. Or is that they're late for everything? I don't know. Could be. I came up with a perfect analogy right here. This is what it feels like. When you don't have love, it's like there's a party going on and everybody was invited except for you and you just happen to be walking by that house in the rain. Mm. I wasn't invited to this party. That's what that feels like. But then again, once you're in love, you know what that's like? That's like being inside that party going, where's my jacket? I want to get out of here. Where's my jacket? I've been at this party six years and I want to see other parties. Where's my jacket? Someone shit on the coats. I think someone shit on, about, or around the coats. <laughs> what? <laughs> there's certain things in a person that turn you on. They're called turn-ons. <laughs> teeth. I love a girl with nice teeth. If you have a nice set of teeth, that's a turn-on for me. If you open your lips and it's like, fling, 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 fling. <laughs> if it's like a booby trap. I don't like when you open your mouth and it's like a battle of epic proportions going on and your teeth are all screaming at each other. I'm a molar wisdom tooth. Get the fuck out of my gums. 
Hi, I'm a buck tooth, and I like to be outside past the lips. I enjoy a nice sea breeze from time to time. Hi, I'm the crazy yellow tooth that looks like corn. Don't brush me. Don't brush me. I have an image to uphold. Don't brush me. I'm yellow. I'm a yellow fang. Turn-ons. Then there's something called turn-offs, and those are things that turn you off. If you were a droid, you'd be turned off. Like right off the bat, number one thing I don't like, I don't like a stinky pussy. Turn off. I don't appreciate that. Ladies, I'm sure you don't like a funky sack. But then again, that'd be a great couple. You have a stinky pussy, smell my sack. Ugh, huh? <laughs> turn ons slash turn offs. That's what we're talking about right now. This girl that I was seeing, this is why we had to break it off because I don't like a girl that exaggerates. I can't listen to your stories when you exaggerate. And here's why, because when you tell me a story, I really listen. I listen, and I don't just listen, I listen. I don't just hear you, I hear you. So when you start telling me the story, what happens to me is my brain is so fantastical that I have such a fantastical brain that when you start to exaggerate, I don't follow the story, I follow the exaggeration. And it gets me frustrated because she would be like, oh my God, Dane, there was a fire down the street from my house. There was like a thousand firefighters out there. No, there was not. That's way too many firefighters. They'd all be out there bumping into each other. What the fuck are we doing out here, guys? There's like a thousand of us. Who called a thousand of us? Is anyone on the hoses? I believe there's a thousand of us if I were to guesstimate. I got home from work today, I took like a hundred hour nap. No, you did not. You'd be very sick if you're taking hundred hour naps. That's a coma. Say you took a coma after work and I can follow the story. I took a coma, hundred hours, was it about a hundred hours? That's a great coma, that's a good coma. Bachelor, I'm a bachelor now. I'm a bachelor guy, you know? Thank you so much for applauding my loneliness. <laughs> you know when you're a bachelor, when it gets to this point. When you've got one light bulb left and you just keep taking it out and bringing it into the room that you needed it. That's how sad and lonely you are. You won't even buy bulbs. Am I the only person here who loves to watch a couple together that hates each other's guts? That has to be the most entertaining thing. When you see two people that just hate each other together. And look, we've all been there. Everybody's been in the situation where you will stay with somebody you don't even like. Them. Two weeks in, you're already like, no way can't stand this person. I'll hang around for five or six years and then we can end this thing violently. <laughs> I got time. <laughs> Girls, you make the craziest excuses to stay, right? Your friends will try to get you out of it. Why don't you just go? Seriously, Jill, just go. Jill, he's a jerk off. Just get out. Why don't you just get your shit and go? You're like, I can't just go, Kim. It's not that simple, okay? My CDs are in his truck. I can't just walk away from 40 or 50 CDs. It's gonna take two or three more years of abuse until I can leave with my CD. <laughs> that couple is the best. They fight over everything. Every little thing, huge explosion. And it's not even about the thing, it's about the fact they wanna stab each other in the neck with a steak knife because they hate each other's existence. They get in what I call nothing fights. 
fights about absolutely nothing, right? You see him waiting in line for the movie theater. They hold hands, but it's not loving at all. It's like this rigor mortis, <laughs> rheumatoid arthritis, red rover grip that they got going on. <laughs> and everything's an argument. I should probably bring my jacket, it might get cold. You bring your fucking jacket. Do you think? Do you think? Yes. But if they're pumping AC in there and then you're cold, I gotta go out and I miss the previews because I gotta get your fucking jacket. Bring your jacket. I love nothing fights. The best nothing fight I've ever seen in my life. I was at the supermarket a few months ago and I'm going down the aisle and I'm at the uh, Stouffer's French Bread Pizzas and I'm deciding, do I want four cheese or one cheese? Because sometimes I like a lot of cheese. Sometimes I like a dancing plethora of cheese in my mouth. And then other times I'm into a more solo cheese adventure, just a single one-on-one, -on -one, me and one cheese. And yet sometimes I want an orgy of cheese on my palate. So as I'm standing there and I'm contemplating my cheese future, I hear the nothing fight going on in the next aisle. I don't know exactly what they're saying, but I hear mumbles and I hear grumbles, okay? I hear the guy going, yeah, 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 uh-huh, yeah. And then I hear the girl and she's like, I don't even care. I don't even care, I don't even care. I don't even care, yeah, 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 uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, 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 I don't even care, I don't even care. I don't even care. I don't care. I don't even care. I hear the nothing fight. I start getting so excited. I'm like, I gotta go watch this. I gotta go see this. I'm so excited, I leave my cart. You never leave your cart. God forbid somebody comes into the store and wants exactly that shit. And they're like, what? Jackpot. This is everything I wanted. <sighs> I'm peeking around the intimate cookies and I'm watching the best nothing fight that I've ever been a part of. They're in each other's face, okay? And the guy is saying to the girl, he's going like this, I asked you, do we have any jelly in the house? Do we or do we not have jelly? You said we did last time. I'm looking in the cabinets. I don't see any goddamn jelly. I just want to know if we have jelly in the house. And she's egging him on. She's like, I don't even like jelly. I don't even like jelly. <laughs> I get hives if I even look at jelly. I don't even know about jelly. I've never, I don't even, what is jelly? I don't even care. <laughs> and he's like, I don't even give a shit about the hives. I want jelly in the fucking house. Stat, pronto, tonight. I don't give it. I will break your neck and pour jelly all over your body and pray to the gods of jelly to burn your soul in a jelly-like hell. Now get the jelly! I'm so excited, I'm eating the Entenmann's out of the box. I've opened a box and I'm eating them. I'll pay for it. Relax. I know you're concerned, but I paid. This is the point during the nothing fight that I like to get involved. <laughs> I have to get involved and I have to say something, just a little jab, a little poke that will fuel the fire and help take it to the next level. As they're going back and forth, I walk by them, I lean in and I go like this, hey dude, 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 I know what you're saying about the jelly, bro. Yeah, tell this twat to get jelly now. Jelly, uh, what's that word, what, twat? Good word, thanks bro, I didn't even, I forgot about that word. Get the jelly, twat! Great word, dude, great word, twat, yes. Those fights, those fights, those are the ones that send you home and that awkward, awful funk is just in the air when you live with that person. Oh, you don't talk for like three and a half days. You keep seeing each other, you walk by each other in the hall like a couple of gunslingers.
Those are fantastic moments right there. Ladies, I will say this. You, you will try to heal the wound first. But we're not ready. We're never ready. When you're ready, we're not, we're still mad. But you'll try. Maybe we're passing each other in the hall or something and ladies, you'll finally stop us and go, uh, is there any, any laundry that you'd like me to do? Is there any laundry you'd like done? But again, we're not ready. Well, there's some laundry I'd like to pack. I'll tell you that. <laughs> when you get to the moment where it's time to finally heal the big bad wound, that usually takes place in the kitchen. That's what I found. The healing takes place in the kitchen. Something about the kitchen, it's medicinal, and you'd like to heal relationships there. Usually guys were in there, right? Maybe washing off some plates or some dirty dishes. And we're still mad. And when a guy is mad, we talk to ourselves. And there's one word that guys will say over and over when we're pissed off. We'll just keep going, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> night and day, night and day. Unbe unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable! <laughs> unbelievable. Then ladies, you come in. Finally, you come into the room, very soft, very... You come in, we don't know you're there at first, you just kind of stand behind us. Hi. Hey, yeah. Hey, what's up? Do you want me to, do you want me to help you with the dishes? Uh, fucking. Yeah, if you wanna fucking. Just fucking doing fucking dishes. Okay, I'll help you. You got your, you got your hair cut? Looks nice. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, fucking. Fucking got a cut. <laughs> Looks nice. It's shorter on the sides. Yeah, fucking told her shorter on the sides. <laughs> it's nice. Can I just say something? Can I just say something right now? I just want, I really would like to just say something. And listen, I'm not trying to instigate and I'm not trying to get you riled up but there was jelly in this cabinet right here I told you that <laughs> yeah I see it now thank you thank you I know about it now I'm very very aware of the jelly situation in the house now thank you thanks a lot hey hey I don't want to fight with you I want to fight for us Can I just say something? Can I just, I have to say something, and I really want you to hear me with what I'm going to say. And could you please look at me? Yeah. All eyes on you, what's up? I just want to say something. I am not a twat. <laughs> and I just... <sighs> I just don't understand. Are you okay? Are you all right? Are you okay? I can't breathe! 
I know. <laughs> Dear Welch's God, thank you for your jelly-like intervention with this twat. Thank you, Welch's God of thunder and jelly and jam. Or something like that. I think about having kids. I'd love to have some kids. I've been thinking about kids. I want to have like 19 kids. I think naming them, that's going to be fun. Whatever the names that you come up with, that's exciting right there. You get to both decide, hey, do you want to name that? No, I don't like that name. Right? It's like a little game you try to come up. I already have names picked out. I don't even know. First kid, boy, girl, I don't care. The first one that comes out, I'm naming it. I think it's beautiful. It's feminine but strong at the same time. Time for bed. I said time for bed. No cookies. Typical. Daddy's on the phone. Daddy's on the phone. I'm gonna name a group of my kids after my favorite cartoon. I'm gonna name a bunch of them after Transformers. That'd be great. Oh yeah, just to be like, Optimus Prime, come here for a second, I wanna to talk to you. Come here, you sit next to Megatron, we're gonna have a little chit chat right here, okay? I am the Cobra Commander in this. I said no cookies! This fucking is driving me up a fucking wall! fun to have a bunch of kids and just abandon them somewhere. <laughs> just knock them out of the car. I'm out. <laughs> what do you think they talk about? <laughs> okay, so I gotta put it out there. I gotta tell you right now, because once in a while in our lifetime, we have experiences and we have to share them. I had a one night stand recently. <laughs> with all those chicks you just heard. It was nuts. It was 14 of them and me. It's a very sexual crowd in here tonight. You can feel it. You can definitely feel it pulsing. In fact, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna play a little game. We're gonna play a little sexual game tonight. Check it out, this is what we do. We turn off all the lights in the room. This game's called, Who's In My Mouth? And it's fun. You don't think you wanna play, but it's addictive. It's like Jenga. You start playing, you're like, all right, who next, who next? Who's in my mouth? Wait, wait a minute, I got it. Oh, oh, I know these balls, wait. I had a one night stand, an ONS, an ONS. And let's be honest here, let's talk about this for a second. We've all been in the one night situation and uh, we've all settled, everybody's settled from time to time. We've all been with a lagoon creature, if I may. We've all been with a bucket of yuck, if I may. We've all been with a what the fuck am I doing here, if I may. <laughs> and that stinks, that's awful when you're doing it and you look down and Skeletor's looking up at you. Oh no. I'm gonna fuck you to Castle Grayskull and then I'm out of here. It's awful. So I meet this girl and we start uh, chit-chatting. We're doing a little chit-chat, right? We're standing at the bar, a little chit, a little chat. And then finally, in guy mode, I start thinking, I gotta get this girl back to my, uh, to my edifice. I gotta get her back to my place. I invite her back to my apartment, or as I call it, the Death Star. I'm still working on it. It's not completely operational. So I pulled this one out. It's such a bad little trick. We finally look at you and we say something about the time. Oh, it's at the time. And then we say, uh, Jesus, time. And then we go, 
you know what we should do? We could, um, want to go back to my place and we can watch a movie? <laughs> That's the one we always use. Hey, maybe, I don't know, you want to come on and watch a movie? Because everybody loves cinematic adventures. <laughs> Who doesn't like movies? Who has ever said, hey, do you want to go see a movie? Fuck that and fuck you, movies. <laughs> it's ridiculous, the whole idea of it. It's just wrong and fake and no. I invite her back to my place. When you bring somebody back to your place, guys, it's all about comfort. You want to make the woman feel comfortable. Never do this. Never lock the door and go. <laughs> Wrong move, sucker! Don't do that. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? It's all about comfort, right? You always do that thing too when somebody comes into your place the first time, you, you give them the awkward tour. You don't know why, you feel weird in your own body, but you show them around. You're like, anyway, this is, uh, this is it. Uh, that's a wall, it's been here for several years. And uh, it's my collection of dirty laundry from around the world. And um, that's a very dead plant that I'm doing experiments on to see how dead it could actually become. Then of course you try to, you know, maybe get up into the bedroom so you can see if things will uh, take place. So you, know, you try to be, you know, cool about that too. Like, anyway, this is the, uh, oh, the, in uh, the bedroom, if you want to see that. I could, I get some new light bulbs up there if you want to. Chase me, just chase me. <laughs> <laughs> Women are brilliant. You do this wonderful maneuver where you never come right into a guy's bedroom. You do this thing where you hold onto the door frame. You keep your feet in the hall and you lean at 45 degrees into the room. Your feet never cross the threshold. You lean, and then you pan around like you're a probe droid, right? And so this is what I did. I loosened the frame. <laughs> so you fall into. I love to make out, so we're making out. This is how I do it. I do the head pivot, some guys stay in one place. I make it interesting, I keep the swivel going on. I'm like a metronome the way I go back and forth. Right when you think you know me, I'm in the West. I'm like a nomad of making out. And I do all the little tricklets, everybody does little tricks. I do the little, I bite your lip and then I suck your lip. And here's my signature move, here's my thing right here. I flick your eye. That's me. If somebody does that to you. Oh, ow, why did you do that? Shh, shh. No more words. Shh, no more words, just emotions. Shh, come here. Ow, I don't like that. Sometimes I like to say little things in your ear, just things to keep you interested, little tiny haikus and whatnots. Sometimes I'll get right in your ear, I'll be like, taste the rainbow. <laughs> Sounds nice. <laughs> then we start taking off clothes and uh, girls, you're so cute. You always do that thing right before you're gonna get naked where you're like, do you mind turning off all the lights in the city? <laughs> <laughs> you always want all the lights off, right? And if we question, why, why do you want the light? My brother threw a javelin at me when I was nine and I have a scar that I'm, I don't really care for. When you're gonna see another person's cash and prizes for the first time. The first time you're gonna see the other person's downtown bonanza. And so you check it out, you hope that it's nice, and she pulled down her underwear, and I'm happy to say she had a nice situation. That's what I call it. I think that's a nicer way to say it. She had an excellent situation, if I can say that. Because let's be honest, some girls, ah, uh, ha ha, bad situation. Horrible situation to be in. I don't like if a girl has a lot of lips. It looks like a box of cow tongues all jammed up. Looks like a high school play curtain that you can't get out of. <laughs> but 
but she had a nice excellent situation. If it was a cottage, I'd rent it for the summer. So she started to, uh, well, she started to pleasure herself and I can never watch that. I try to watch, but I turn away and I giggle. I can never watch a girl play. There's just something about it. You look like a DJ, like. I want it. I can't look at DJ Diddles. Look like you have the cans on. Right, you're wondering, what's going on down there? How do they keep? Hold on. Somewhere there's a crime being committed and I must fight for justice. Let's go, Jesus. What's up, whistles? <laughs> you should work with dolphins. I definitely, you can make them do all sorts of flippies with a whistle like that. That's the kind of whistle where if you're next to that guy in the ballpark, you're like, this fucking asshole won't stop whistling like a fucking idiot. Thanks for coming out. Here's where it gets a little embarrassing and I have to put this out there. This is what I did because I kind of forgot that I was with her and I started, you know, she's doing it. I figure, hey, I'll catch up. <laughs> so I start to investigate my crime scene. I'm giving myself a sip of wits. <laughs> and here's what I forgot. I started to do it like I do it when I'm alone. And guys, no, you don't do it the same. When you're alone, it's when we're in front of you ladies, we flex. And we try to sound cool. We say shit like, I'm a robot. But when we're alone, we wiggle around and our toesies spread out really far and wide. And sometimes I sing a little tune to myself. I forgot she's there. I start singing the Super Mario Brothers music from Nintendo. Deep, deep, deep. Then I disappear in a giant pipe. <laughs> and I collect coins in my basement. I gotta tell you this, because I've always wanted to uh, share this with a crowd. This is a story. It's a coming of age tale. And it's about the first time that I ever got head. Come on along with me. I'll never forget this. I was 17 years old, and I took this girl out on a date, and I took her to Papa Gino's. and I got her the spaghetti basket. It's delicious. <laughs> and so at the very end of the date, uh, it drove her home and uh, we were sitting in front of her house and it was that awkward moment, you know, when you just, you want to kiss, but you're still so shy and you end up talking for like four and a half fucking hours. <laughs> So finally, uh, she leaned in and she was like, well, anyway, I should probably go because it's dusk. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I guess I should go too. And we both leaned in and we, and we kissed. And then out of nowhere, and I didn't even expect it, she went, oh. <laughs> and so very quickly, I ripped off my jeans like I was in the NBA. <laughs> and I put my seat back. And uh, she started to give me the, you know, you know. And it was fantastic and it felt so good. And then suddenly I started feeling little tingles and jingles. Like I was about to, you know what I'm saying? And the, the law is we have to tell you, right ladies? We have to let you know. We have to tell you. We want to tell you, but we don't at the same time, right? 
So it's like, I want to tell her, but I, instead I tell the seatbelt. I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. I'm, at least I've told something. I'm doing like Morse code on her head. So finally, I did. I was like Bugs Bunny on the moon. I was just like, ding, 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 ding. But before I go any further, I have to say something because I want to tell you one of the most adorable things in the entire world is that moment when a girl goes to get out of your car and they don't really, they're not familiar with the car and they're like, anyway, I gotta go. Good night. Where's the handle? I don't know. I'm sorry, where is the... Do I have to wish myself out? I don't... I think that's so... I don't even help. I just lean back and I just... I just cherish you in that moment because you're so cute. So anyway, back to the... Ching, 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 ching. Right? And I'm doing my thing. And finally, I'll never forget this. It was so... As long as I live, I'll never forget. She sat up and she went... Whoa, the handle. The girl... <laughs> and that's my coming of age today. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I'm excited to uh, tell you about a trend that I've started. And I didn't want to start this trend. I didn't even realize I was starting a trend. And now this trend is sweeping the, na no, it's swiffering the nation. I'm gonna tell it to you right now and I guarantee many of you will do it and this will become like a national fucking craze. Here's what I did, check this out. I got an erection, okay? And, uh, and yes, it was a good one. Because guys know, it's always different makes and models. You're never sure. Some days it looks sad and very orc-like and kind of... It's drifting away and... Your ball sack is stuck to your thigh like it's trying to escape. I don't want to be your sack no more. I refuse to be a part of your satchel. Come on back, Sack. No, no, no. I'm offended by you and your underpants. So check this out. It wouldn't go away. It was hanging out with me for like half the day. It just wouldn't go away. I was like, come on, beat it. Come on. Wow, that was a great one, two, three. Oh, we get it. <laughs> I get this, pow! I get this erection. Out of nowhere. I wasn't even thinking about it. It just came up. Very urgent. Gotta talk to you, Dane, right now. And it was a good one, and I started getting excited. I wanted to paint it like a lighthouse. The vein was like a perfect spiral staircase right up to the Thunderdome. So check this out. I was in my kitchen with my, pow! My lead singer. I'm on drums. And despite the fact that I had this erection, I'm getting hunger pangs. And I needed nutrition. So I decide I'm gonna make myself a peanut butter and jelly with some ruffles and a crystal light. Because I find that to be delicious and nutritious. <laughs> As I go to get the paraphernalia together to make the sandwich, right? I look over, there's a can of cashews on my left, your right. I want you to see it. I open it up, I take a cashew, put it on the tip of my hog, I bent it back, shot it into my mouth. First try. First try, dude. I catapulted mm, a cashew into my gullet. You're gonna do it, you're gonna do that, dude. You gotta do it. Use a cashew, don't use a peanut. A peanut goes rogue, you don't know where a peanut's gonna go. A cashew contours to the tip as if to say, let's do this, I'm a cashew. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of here. Good night.
Good night, guys. Thank you very much. Take care. Thanks a lot. I'll see you guys later.